Hey everybody, today we're going to be reading a story called The Invisible Boy. It was written by Trudy Ludwig and it was illustrated by Patrice Barton. The Invisible Boy is a story about a boy who doesn't feel like anybody really sees him or hears him. So we will take a listen and a look at the pictures, and try to understand our new friend and see what happens with him. Thanks for listening. The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig Illustrated by Patrice Barton The Invisible Boy Can you see Brian, the Invisible Boy? Even Miss Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. Nathan has problems with what Miss Carlotti says, volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball teams. The best players get picked first. Then the best friends of the best players. Then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting still hoping. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about birthday parties. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so is the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, said Madison. Everybody did except Brian. He wasn't invited. At choosing time, while the other kids played board games and read, Brian sits at his table, doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons, scaling tall buildings. Thank you for toasting my marshmallow. And space aliens locked in intergalactic battles. I got you now. Greedy pirates digging for treasure. Crackers, are yay. And superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. Hi, hi friend, have a cookie. That superhero looks a bit like Brian. On Monday morning, Miss Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student, to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made their minds up yet. At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's bulgogi. Bul what? Bulgogi. It's Korean barbecued beef. My grandmother made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I'd eat booger ghee. And all the kids laugh. All of them, that is, except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. And I have had that and it's actually pretty amazing. Now I want some. 
The next day, when Justin goes to get his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian, yum. That's a nice thing for a friend to do. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing away. You're Brian, right? Yeah. Thanks for the note. Hey, Justin, Emilio calls out from the tether ball court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, said Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. A little bit of a dinosaur. Back in class, Miss Carlotti asks the kids to team up to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm already with Justin, said Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Miss Carlotti said we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio. Let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Emilio doesn't seem like a very nice guy. Hopefully he changes. Miss Carlotti gives the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think would live in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. I wonder what kind of people live in those houses. And here they are presenting. So they're thinking about what they're going to draw, what they're going to write. They're working together as a great team. And now they're presenting. Narrator. Hi, I'm the narrator. And if you're wondering why a pirate got the part of a narrator, I'll tell you. It's all in the agent. Well, now on with the tale. A crooked story they made up on the spot. So they have some pictures, and that's a little bit of what they were writing. At lunchtime again, Brian's least favorite part of the day, another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout. Hey, Brian, over here. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Amelia nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. Maybe, just maybe, Brian's not so invisible after all. A cookie? Thanks. Mmm. Mmm. The end. Hey everybody, so I hope you enjoyed The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig. I just wanted to mention with you guys that sometimes we all feel this way. We feel invisible or we feel sad because other people take up the room a little bit more or we feel attention isn't being given to us as much as other kids. Sometimes it's fair, sometimes it's not fair, um, but it's what we do with that attention that matters or that lack of attention. Okay, so here's some great ideas that we got from The Invisible Boy. We can write stories and pictures and create wordlets for ourselves that make us happy. We can write notes uh, to friends, maybe a teacher, letting them know that we feel lonely or left out. 
we can also see these things happening to someone else and do something for them. Whether you pick them first in a recess game or you write them a note or draw them a picture, letting them know that they're not alone and that they do have a friend. Because a lot of those feelings of being left out make us very sad or upset or angry and all of those icky sad feelings they sit up inside of us and they don't go away so we don't want to have those sad feelings we want to make sure that everyone feels happy and is belonging in our school in our community and just being the best friends and people we can be thanks for watching